or should dampen. That's what I saw clear. He says, my people don't know where to put me now. Say, tell them. He said, you don't know whether you should continue to believe him or to dump him. You are contemplating. You don't know. You don't know. This God, this God, what should I do? This God. Should I continue to believe or should I give up? Should I continue to stay strong? Should I continue one more day? The Lord is saying that you are with friend. You don't know where to put him. That's what he said. He said, they don't know where to put me. Whether they to put me in their heart or to dump me in the dumpster. We are going to pray. Lord, forgive me for doubting thy power. Forgive me of my sin. Not the sin of alcohol. Not the sin, not the sin of sexual immorality. He's not talking about that today. He's saying that the sin of denying me in your heart. Mm. Mm. The sin of rejecting me, knowing that I'm the one speaking, but you block my words because of your unbelief. They lift up your voice and begin to pray now before he will descend in a mighty and a glorious way. Lift up your voice and call upon him and cry out unto him and say, Lord, forgive me. And this is what I hear spiritually. Lord, prepare me to be your sanctuary. Pure and holy, tried and true, Ooh, with them giving, and I will be a Germany to France. He said, Lose the schools. Lose the schools. I know it's Sunday, but I saw I said, I saw I said hitting the ground like that. Ah, 
as soon as doing that. I don't know what that means, but I know it means something in the realms of the spirit. That by the way you snap the ground, it will affect every ground. Every ground in Paris, in, 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 in Belgium, everywhere, everywhere. Lose the schools, lose the politicians, lose them, lose them, lose them, lose them. Now, 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 let them be loose. We lose the schools on, on, on Mondays. So let every demon of depression be gone. Amen. Every thought of suicide be gone. Amen. Any spirit of sorrow be arrested. Amen. May the Lord break the neck of that thing. Amen. That it will not speak anymore. Amen. So remember what the Lord showed. Showed through the worship how we are contemplating what to do with him. So let your mind be made up. Let your mind be made up that this is my only way. This is my only hope. I don't have anything else. Some of you might have some things that you're depending on, but the, all those things will fail you. The Lord said, let your focus be on Him. Amen. Tell the person to be close to you, focus on God. Focus on God. Every other thing will fail. But it's very soon and it will be over. Amen. Okay, so now, I want to deepen it. I want to take the 27. Now, Jesus is the one talking. He said, Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I see? That means, now what kind of prayer can I pray to God? <laughs> what, what, what should I tell God? Because, you see, some of you say, what, Who should I talk to? Which friend can advise me of what I'm going through? But he, being the Lord of Lords, he said, what should I say to the Father? So that means when you have a problem, who you talk to first is your God. If you ever have a problem and you quickly run to a friend to tell that friend first before you go into prayer, that friend is crowned as your God. Now here is As a believer, you will go through. Amen. You will go through. Yeah. You will get to a point where your soul can feel pain. That is why it is there. It is not there just to keep you there, but you will feel it. You will feel some days. You will feel the touch when you feel like, God, haven't I fasted long enough? Haven't I prayed long enough? Haven't I done this long enough? That, that is the time your human senses, your human reasoning is now canceling you. Yeah. And it's trying to create a conflict between you and the one who is about to bless you. Are you me? So the devil comes to you, uses your human emotions and feelings, and tells you that don't you think there's something wrong here? I mean, didn't you fast? Fast? Don't, don't, don't. I mean, put it together. I know you're a smart guy, you're a smart lady. You know, one plus one, you know, it's two. After the fasting, God was supposed to bless you. After the one night prayer, God was supposed to bless you. And it gives you reasons. Fight God. Then all of a sudden you back up and say, yeah, yeah, this thing is true. God, I think you are not being fair to me. And instead of the worship mood, now you change gear to reverse. You are going back. You are going back. You are cursing yourself. Let that evil thoughts flee. Mm -hmm. So that's what the enemy wants to do. He wanted to cast the hand that is about to bless you. He wanted to push the hand that is about to anoint you. So Jesus was going through the same thing. That's why God key on me. He said, hey, today you start from the 27. It doesn't matter whether they have gone over it. Start it from there because I'm going to speak to some people. He says, stop the grumbling and the mumbling. You might not utter them as words sometimes, but they are on your mind and in your heart and the atmosphere you are supposed to create for God becomes defiled. There's an atmosphere. God, God is the God of the atmosphere. You create an atmosphere for God, He comes. No atmosphere, He doesn't come. That is why even the old book says that Satan goes before God. Why? It's not that Satan is bigger than God, no. But Satan understood, I need to prepare a place for God. 
Even though God will not come. Even in heaven, Satan has to go before God. Lord, we proclaim, and then you see God come here. Come here. You now, and then God is coming because an atmosphere has been created. Are you with me? Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jehovah Almighty. Did you see God coming? Big God. <laughs> coming like that. So yeah, Lucy, you are singing very well. As long as you're worshiping like this, I will come. That is why sometimes the thought crossed my mind. That from the time Lucifer was cast from heaven, Jesus should have come to the earth and say that, for God is still, God searches for such to worship him. God is still looking for somebody who can worship. Are you doing what That's why your worship is mostly attacked. Is it before you start complaining at God, eh, your worship has already been attacked. You can easily sing love songs, but you can't sing worship songs. Some of you, if I take your phone right now, there was enough love songs. It's some of you, even your, love, your ringtone is a love song. It is not a worship song. Amen? Amen. When, you see, prepare an atmosphere that when your soul is strong, the atmosphere will help you. Prepare an atmosphere. So any time the enemy manages to give you some ideas that can get you to become weak, the atmosphere that you've prepared will help you to stand. Hmm? If you go to some people's house who are contemplating whether they are going to leave God or not, they have some things that they've planned or they've kept in a box that the day I leave God, I will use this, I will do this, I will do that, I will do this. You too need to prepare a box full of stuff that can encourage you anytime the enemy hits you down. When you see this, then say that I'm not giving up because God did this. Yeah. And God did that. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know all the things you are telling me. It looks true. And then God has folded his arms and is looking at you because the outcome is worship. The outcome, the decision you will make there, it becomes worship unto God. I know, I know, I know, I know. Let your mind be here. He says that I am the son of God, Jesus Christ. He's the son of God. But now, my soul is strong. Another place also says that Jesus mourned and groaned because he was full of sorrow that, that those times. So if the son of God goes through this, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Another thing that we were discussing in the Bible says, let me chip it in. You see, the reason why God has to leave the Son, and Jesus don't lie. So if Jesus said that, Lord, I feel forsaken. Do you know, do you understand the word forsaken? That you have been rejected. There's nothing else. Because he was carrying my sins. So God cannot stand that. Jesus, you are love. But apostle sin, I can't deal with that. So for now, I'll forsake you. Are you with me? Yeah. One that I've never seen before. Jesus Christ. Carried my sins upon him. Nailed it to the cross. That moment. The father said, no, I can't deal with this. Now. The father went back. The son who his whole life has been built upon the relationship and the environment that he has lived in, has been always godly. My God is here. My Father is here. So I will make it his whole life. For once, he felt God is not here. I'm forsaken. To the extent that he didn't even think it, he didn't even meditate upon it, but he screamed out loud. He felt it. He felt it. To don't let sin have a foothold in your life. I'm supposed to preach like 10 minutes, but I don't know how this is going to be. Jesus, have mercy. He said, should I tell God? He said, hear this. Father, save me from this hour. Should I tell God? 
to change his mind about what I'm going through. That, that's what it means. It was a question. It wasn't, it wasn't a prayer. It wasn't a statement. He's a question. He said, I know what I'm going through is part of my life. Where I am going, I must go through this. Where God is taking me, I must go through what I am going through now. I've come to the earth. I need to go back to my father. The only way I can go back to the father is to go through the cross. So now Jesus is like, for me, my breakthrough is to go back to the father. And now, this thing is in between me and my father. The cross is in between me and my father. So he was asked, should I now tell God to change his mind so that I can stay here? But I want to go back to my father. Where he was was so powerful that he said, what would you do then if you saw where I was with the father, where I was seated with the father? Have you read that before? What would you do then if I should show you where I was seated? Where he was was better. So now he has to go back. So it's the same thing. There are dreams and, and, and ambitions, aspirations, a lot of stuff that you have that you want to do. But until you go through this, you can't get there. You can pray around it. You can dive prayer into it, but you gotta go through it. There is no shortcut. Because you know what? If you bypass it and God takes you there, you will teach other people the same thing. I'm telling you, if you bypass it, if God should let you escape this, when you reach the top, you will tell other people, you know, I was also being tested. And then I went and I met this man of God in the village somewhere. He laid his hand upon me and all my problems was over. So everybody go and look for that man of God. No more trying the kingdom of God. And what would that become? Huh? What, what, what would become that? I don't worship. That, that man will become our God. Everybody will fight and try to touch and get a piece of him. And, and they will say, oh, let's go and serve God. No, 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 forget about God. I have this man here. He solved problems. So that we will stop seeking for the true God and then we will use men. Amen. Amen. So Jesus said that, what should I say? Save me from this hour. But for this cause came out until this hour. This is the reason why I was born. <laughs> I get what I'm saying. For this cause, this is the reason why I have come this far. In other words, you escape the tsunami, you escape the snow, the wind, the accidents, you have escaped all of that. But this is the reason why God preserved me so that I could escape all of those things. And now this is the remaining reason why I've come to this. So now should I reverse my life? When you should have died when you were a child? God said, no, no, no. I have a, I have a trial that Lucifer has worried me for so long that there will be nobody like you that can, that can honor me and worship me by saying no and denying your senses and your human reasonings and to allow me to be God in your life. So I, I allow Lucifer that Lucifer, you know what? When the guy is at the age of 32, 39, you can let that thing happen. Are you here with me? Yeah. Or when he's at 33, Jesus, 33 years, God didn't permit this thing to happen earlier. Are you with me? So God, what God does is that he showers you. He shows you his power. He, he teaches you a lot about him for the trial that is set before you. So when the trial appears, you will not deny him. Say, who is the God who took me from Africa to this place? Should I now let a job block me from worshiping him? Mm. I, I see how God has planned the whole thing. Who is that God that saved me when I was about to die? Should I now turn my back on? So, because God has shown you a lot of stuff. So, when the trial comes, 
you'll be able to stand and not to give up on him. So Jesus said that this is the reason. I've come to this hour. I've come to this time. This temptation is the reason that I, why I was born and is the reason why I have been preserved 33 years. And somebody, you are going through something right now and you wish you were no more. You wish you vanish. You wish the ground will open and swallow you. But the ground will vomit you out because this thing you must pass. Yes. The trial you are going through, you must pass it. Yes. Heaven must give you the check sign. Yes. And what I told them at Bible says that when heaven gives you the check sign, hell also gives you a check sign. That this is the man who has conquered this thing. And then we cannot worry him. Once you, you pass, you must be promoted. Are you getting something? Hallelujah. Somebody, I can see you being loose from the spirit, the spirit of trouble, worry, anxiety, something that is worrying you, something that is frustrating you. You are, you are coming, you are becoming loose now. Amen. Your mind is becoming free. Amen. You are beginning to sink all the day. Because all you saw was that problem, that problem, that problem. And the enemy knows how to do. He wants your focus to be on the problem and not on God. Because the more you think about the problem, the problem becomes your God. And God vanishes. Let me continue. Now here, here comes the happy side of the, of the sermon today. Father, glorify thy name. Oh, Jesus. This is a powerful thing. What Jesus is saying, the Lord, I am standing here on the earth and I want you to use me as a tool to bring glorification to you. Have your seat. That is 28. 28. So now Jesus has just announced in the 27 his inward pain and feeling. I don't know whether you are here with some disturbances, something that is worrying you a little bit. But that was going on inside of Jesus. And then, outside and around him, they could hear. He's saying, God, use me to bring glory to your name. Not glory to my name, but glory to your name. And when God decides to answer that prayer, Every problem that was going on inwardly, what do you think will happen to that problem? Will be solved. Will vanish. Amen? Amen. He said, my soul is strong. My soul, my soul, inside. I'm worried, I'm confused. Things are not going the way I wanted. I prayed, but it doesn't happen. This thing is happening. This thing is happening. When I found a little strength here, the thing is a disappointment. When I think I'm hearing the voice of God, uh, I did not take things out to be God. Uh, I'm confused. I'm worried. I'm, I'm perplexed. Anxiety is all over me. But in spite of all of that, he said, Lord, let me be the last man standing. Use me to glorify your name. If I will die, being known as a, somebody, a man of God, who died because of what he believes, then God has been glorified. Then let it be so. I'm saying this because there will be something that God will ask you to do. And to you, it will look like that will be the end of your life. But then this is what you should say. That if this will kill me, then I will die and let it be known that I died for what I believe. I'm telling you. If you don't have that mentality, you are not going anywhere. It's better you quit. I love the way the Koreans, the South Koreans, they say, say, if you cannot do this thing, resign. They say, resign. God will replace you very quick. That's what he said. <laughs> That's what he said. They say, very, very, very quick. He said, if you can't do this thing, if you cannot have this mind in you that I stand for God, and whatever God says we should do, we will do it. He said, you better resign. There are other people who are begging God to keep them in that position. Amen. Oh yeah, yeah. There are people who are begging. Go and sit somewhere. 
you are in this house so you can see, you can pray. You see the way the spirit of prayer comes upon you when you, when you, the prayers you pray, you can pray in your house. People are praying somewhere that God give me strength to pray. And you are in a, a church, a prayerful church, and you can pray. But then the, the enemy blocks you from coming to church. Hey, deal with that spirit right now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So, don't take it for granted. Everybody here under the sound of my voice. God is going to use you to glorify his name. Amen. Yeah. This is what I was meditating upon. I said, God, today, anybody that will come to church, let them become a tool, an instrument, something or someone that God, a people will say, God bless this guy because I know, I know, I know his beginning. I knew it. I saw him. I saw him. And now, look at what God has made. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. And it was strong in my spirit. Then came there a voice from heaven. And, and when these things are going to happen, it always comes with a sound. Tell the person in the cross, I hear a sound around you. There's a sound. Around you. Mm. There's a sound. And, and then, and then, you see, when Jesus Christ, thank you, then, thank you. You see, if you can let go of the trouble, of the problems, it says, God, in spite of what I'm going through, glorify thy name. Then, are you reading your Bible? Then, I'm broke, but God be glorified. Then, I'm worried, but God be glorified. Then, <laughs> everybody hates me, but God, be God. Then, my husband left me. Then, what are you saying? What are you saying then? <laughs> when the thing is happening. Exactly. If you can stand and say, then God, this is, this is still you. I am broke. I am weak. I am tired. I am worried. I don't know what to do with my life. But still continue to be God of my life. Then, Came a and when your mind, I'm not this, this thing will not just happen because you said it once today. It has to become a lifestyle. Yeah. My wife called me and said, Oh, we have a lot of bills to pay. Mm. God glorify thy name. <laughs> it to become a lifestyle. When it becomes a lifestyle, then I don't know what I'm saying. Then you are not worried anymore. Then, 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 then there will come a sound. There will be no sound if it's not a lifestyle. If it's just a, a, a weekend feeling. A weekend feeling is a, the feeling you get when you come to church. That booster. When you come to church, what you get on Sunday, the enemy will design a trial for you on Monday. When you just like the same way as everybody goes to office. Satan will go to office. Say, ah, I heard the message the apostle preach on Sunday. So let me see uh, what kind of trouble or trial I can design for this person. To see whether he will allow the message to sink deep down or he will flash this message also. So he start designing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Working this. Mm -hmm. Working this. And whatever the enemy writes down, he will then present it to God. He said, God, now this is the trial I want to place before your son based on the message they heard on Sunday. So, you know, I want you to permit me to present this thing in their life and see whether they really captured the spirit that was in the house that day. Hey. And then the trial comes. And it is an opportunity for you to say, Oh, Father, let thy name be glorified. Amen. And then you will pass, number one. And then you will bring another one, number two. And you will bring another one, number three. And you will bring another one, number four. And you will bring another one, number five. He will bring it in all kinds of boxes, different, different pastors, different, different ways to see whether it has become a lifestyle or there will be one of them that will cause you to say, God, I thought you loved me. Hey, I believe I'm preaching very, very well. <laughs> Whether I make comes or no, I believe I'm preaching very, very, very well. My God, 
the day came there a voice from heaven saying I have both glorified it but for this for this new behavior of yours I will glorify it again oh you didn't get it you didn't get it Jesus he said that the father spoke the father was impressed with the decision of Jesus Christ, knowing what he's going to go through. But he said, God be glorified. Then God opened the heavens, and then the sound started coming. And the sound that came, now the voice of the Lord said, God the Father said, listen, what you are asking, I've done it. Both means what? Two. Isn't it so? Uh -huh. yes. I've done it to myself, I've done it over you, I've done it before, but with this behavior and this new ideology, I am compelled to do it again. Amen. Hey, Jesus, let the spirit in Scandinavia that kills the message be arrested. Amen. <laughs> I'm telling you, somebody, there's something you're going through right now. And all that God is expecting from you is say, Lord Father, let thy name be glorified. Amen. And God will release a sound. When the sun comes, the sun waves will cast out darkness. Amen. And then God will speak and he says, Hey, you said that. I will do it again. I will do it again. I'm the one who took you from that witchcraft game. I'm the one that delivered you from those wicked people. I'm the one when they took your name to the shrine. I'm the one that shut down the shrine. But for what you just said, I will do it again. Amen. If you want, you can clap. It's okay. Clapping is free. <laughs> it didn't still clap. Don't worry. I thought somebody would clap and say, Lord, do it again. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I see God is coming somebody's way. God is coming some, you know, and what God is showing me prophetically, he said you are taking baby steps. It's like a baby steps. Your steps are not bold enough. But God said, I'm coming to do something again to give you a booster. Amen. Amen. So that your, your baby steps will change to the normal steps. Amen. A huge step. Amen. And, and somebody that knows where he's going. Amen. When you go to the town, and you see people who are, they are not familiar, they're not familiar with the area. There's a way they walk. And then when you see people who know where they are going, there's a way they walk. Ah, oh, oh, they didn't get that one to God. Jesus, may your walk change. May your walk change. Yeah, you know where you're going. Yeah, yeah, there's a problem, but I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. May your walk change. May your walk change. May your walk change. May the Lord change to them. May you change to them. May you change to them. May you change to them. When you see the people who don't know where they are going, they take two steps, they stop. Where? Where? Where are you? Where are you? Where am I? Where am I? Which way? Where am I now? Am I lost or am I I'm okay? <laughs> but those who know where they are going, they don't even question anybody. They are walking, they are walking, they are walking. May your life become like that. Amen. You don't need opinions from unbelievers. Yes. Don't let any unbeliever come and tell you that this is the only way you can make it. This is the only way you can make it. We came here many, many years ago, and this is what we've all done. And that's why we have all the things we have. No, your story is different. Amen. You have asked God to glorify himself in you. Amen. So it's going to take God, and God he will do it by your boldness. Your boldness, the way you walk, people will see you and say, ah, this guy, he is very sure of where he's going. The attitude got to change. Christianity also has attitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has attitude. Christianity, he has a style. Christianity have a way. You know, <laughs> he has a way. He doesn't only have tongue speaking, reading Bible. He has a style. And when that style is around him, people will feel. Oh, this guy is a hey, this guy, this guy is a Christian. The way he talks. He doesn't swear. Number one. You can't swear. You can't use curse words. 
you're a man of God. You can't say F, you can't say B. You can't say, you know, all the other ones that the world is saying. <laughs> Your words must be on point. Not all these negative words that they fall out of them. No, no, no. That means the engine is defiled. You see, we have a church bus, bus outside there. The only problem with that bus, it, the body looks very nice. Why? Jesus loves you. Okay? But the engine is down. <laughs> If the engine was okay, we would pick all of you up to check. So it might be very nice looking, but the engine is broken. Mm. And you will stand there. My landlord sat there and said, when are you going to move that thing away? I said, oh, that thing. Now it has become a signboard. It is sharing the gospel. Mm. <laughs> but I pray that that will not be your story. Yeah. You will not be a Christian that talks about Christ. But there's nothing to show off. Amen. There's nothing to show that this Christ you are preaching really lives in you. There must be evidence. Yes. There must be sign. Amen. Tell the present people, my brother, I want to see something. I want to see something in your life. I want to see something happen to you. I want to, I, I, I hear your prayers. I, I've heard the way you say amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But now I want to see something. Yeah, when you do that, then everybody will go into the Christian mood. They say, God, you hear what the brother said? You must bless me. I must share my testimony so that they can know that I'm not saving you in vain. I hear it said that. Father, glorify yourself. Amen. Now, the next breakthrough. Ah, thank you, Jesus. The next thing that is about to happen to you is your mind on yourself. Or is it something? that you want God to get the glory? Is this something for yourself? Something to show off with or something to boast with? Something to argue with? Something to fight with? Or it is something that is going to become a tool or a point of glorification unto God? Back then I used to say, God, I used to have people that after they've hurt me, they've hurt me. I said, God, you know what? All these people, after you bless me, when they come to me, I'll tell them, now you are coming to me. You will see what I, you see now, now I, I will not help you. And God said, no, 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 no. As long as you have that mentality, the blessings will not come. I said, oh, is that so? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't bless when the blessing is going to turn to be a curse. You didn't get that one. Amen. Don't worry, I'll go and preach it somewhere else. But I will bless you that I get glorified. Yes. I will bless you. That everybody that will see you, your mouth can even be shut, but glorification will be rendered unto God. Yeah. <laughs> that's what God is planning. That's what God is planning. He said, that's what I want to do. He said, rewire your brains. Don't ask me to bless you in an area whereby you want that blessing to come and then you can prove a point to some people. There will be no point in it. But let everything be pointed towards me. Amen. And then the blessing will come quicker. Amen. That's what it is. Amen. Amen. That's why sometimes we don't make right decisions. Maybe a guy left you. You are praying for a man. Father, give me a man so I can take your walk in front of that other guy. No, no, no. The man will not come. Only, only ghost will come. Ghost. But if you can make up your mind that God, let the man that is coming Come and help me. Teach me how to glorify your name. Man will show up. Yeah. If the woman that is coming, Lord, I want a woman who loves you more than even me. Somebody that when I'm getting weak can pick me up and say, honey, let's go to church. It is God's time. Let's go and serve him. Let's go and worship him. The woman will appear. Yeah. Yeah. But if you are looking for the woman, with big chest and big behind, you will get it. But as time goes on, everything that is big will fall flat. <laughs> that was a story, advice from my old lady. Say, hey, everything that is too big will fall flat on me. I said, Auntie, what are you saying? Say, yes, when you grow, you understand. Go. I said, oh. as time goes on, I started seeing myself. Ah, even the macho, the masculine, the things I had. 
Now they started falling flat. They said, oh, no, I understand what the old lady was saying. So what God is saying here is that let everything that you are asking for be to him. Amen. All to him. I will leave. I'm not sure. When I'm sitting somewhere and I'm reading the Bible, I want people around me to say I'm reading the Bible. And I can feel them because prophetically I can, I can sense from their spirit that I, people still believe in this. Yeah, there's one. There's one last fool on the earth. Yeah, I'm a fool. I believe this. I am brainwashed. Just like some of you, the way your friends or your girlfriends or your wives tell you that you are brainwashed. It take, take, tell, tell them that, listen, I, even there's some space left. I won't go to wash that plastic. <laughs> oh, I love the way Swedish people put it. And a young sweater. It's power, there's power behind it. Your brains have been put in the bowl and it's washed. Young sweater. When Jesus does that, there's no room for sin. At all. <laughs> so it looks like we are not properly brainwashed. May the Lord brainwash you. Yeah. Uh, I think you are enjoying it today, but you will get it later. Thank you, Jesus. Now, 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 let me speak this thing. God, thank you. The people, therefore, 29, hear this thing, and now I'm about to change gear over here. The people, therefore, that stood by, hmm, you know there are people standing by you. Okay, you will get this now. You get this one. And heard it. See this? Old. People standing by. You are the center focus. The whole thing is about you, your life, your story. Everybody knows it. And there are some people around you. Whatever you are doing, you are like, you think God is going to bless him. <laughs> standing by. Hmm? He's, we are praying. Is it? They are standing by. And hear this. And they heard it. May they begin to hear. Yeah. <laughs> Let those that have discouraged you long enough. Let them begin, let their ears, every wax in their ears come out. Amen. And may they begin to hear God say, I'm about to glorify this one that you are teasing. The one that you are insulting is about to become. <laughs> you didn't get it. This is the place you get out and you shout, you clap, you shout, because, because he's about to do it. You think Jesus standing there is all. Oh, He's all comfortable. He knows behind him there are his disciples who are doubting. What is this man preaching? Pharisees who are waiting to catch a word from his mouth to go and nail him to the cross because people who have come, everybody, everybody have their own opinion about the man of God. Are you gonna say? Everybody have their opinion about the man of God. And everybody have an opinion about you. Your, your real friends, that you call your real friends, I pray that one day they will invent a computer whereby we can connect it and then you see their real opinion they have about you. They will tell you, you know you're my best friend. You know me more than anybody. If anything, whatever, blah, blah, blah. You say it all. But when you connect their brain to the screen of God, what they really, really, really think about you, it will appear. Unless you are very prayerful, and you can pick up signals, then you can descend. You don't have to even hear what they say. Mm. You feel them. That's why I tell you that I don't know you people by your names or by your faces alone, but I know you by the spirit. I can be in a house and God tells me, stand up and pray for this person. This and that and that is happening. And I pray. That's how I know you. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. He said, the people that stand by, they heard it. And as I'm prophesying over you, as long as you continue to come to church and to hear messages like this and to live your life in accordance to the word that you hear here, they will hear something about you. Amen. God sometimes likes them to say something about you first before they will hear something about you. So that it will contradict what they said before. Let there be a contradiction going on in their imagination. Amen. And then hear this, hear this. I'll show you that there are two, there are two sides, two kinds of people around you. Look, look at this. They heard it. Said that they, the people who heard it said that 
in thunderous. Hmm? And they said that an angel spoke to him. Hmm. Uh, I'm hoping that you can catch it before I even preach it. Hey, do you get it? Do you get what is happening? Yeah. They're good ones. So this guy has come so far that now heaven has permitted angelic voices to be signaled into his brains. And this man that is standing there is being moved by the angelic forces of God. But yes. well, wouldn't you like to have a friend like that? Mm -hmm. That sees that you're a true man of God, that God is using you, and there are angels around you, and God speaks to you, and then, then you have the other side. Oh, this is nothing. It's just ordinary thunder. You didn't get that one? Mm -hmm. The other said, oh! Oh, what is this? Oh. It is thunder, it's no voice. It has nothing to do with God. The, it is thunder. <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing. God is blessing you, but some people want to make the blessing look like it's nothing. You didn't get that one. You didn't get that one. You didn't get that one. God is, let me repeat it until you get it, I will not stop it. God is blessing you health wise. God is blessing you financially. God is blessing you. But there are people around you that wants you to think that it is normal. When you think it's normal, what do you do? You don't give glorification to God. You see where the whole thing is. And as long as you don't glorify God, he will not do it again. Are you with me? Yes. As long as you don't glorify God, you are not going to see it again. When the ten lepers, because of their leprosy, they were far away from Jesus. Jesus didn't go and lay hands upon them. He said, by faith, Go, show yourself to the high priest. He didn't ask them to come back to glorify him. Are you here with me? He didn't ask them to come back to praise him. He said, let's go. Your problem, I'll fix it. The food you were asking for today, I've given it to you. One of them, whilst he was going, saw, remembered, acknowledged that God did this thing. He stopped the gold. He turned around. Let me go and render worship to the one who did it. He turned back, came back weeping. He said, Jesus, you know what? Waking up every morning, I've always thought that it was my right. I didn't know that people went to bed yesterday, but they have died. I, I thought just walking, walking, it was my right. I didn't know that that was a miracle. I didn't know that to be able to lift up my hand like this, I thought that it was my right. I didn't know that you are involved. My brains that are working, I thought that it was normal. It is nothing. It is thundering. I didn't know that you are the one holding my brain. For me not nakeding myself and start walking on the streets, thinking that I am in my right mind, and look at people who are dressed that they are out of their mind. If you ask all the mad people on the streets in Africa, you tell them, why are you not wearing clothes? They say, why should I wear clothes? You are, all of you are mad. I am correct. You are mad. That's what a madman, who is mad, will tell you. You might be doing something you think is right, but it's wrong. If God don't open your mind and tune you up to see, you'll be on the wrong journey and you'll destroy your life. I can stand on your feet if you want to clap for Jesus. <laughs> It is up to him. To have strength, to have good health, is up to him. What he wants, he will do. If God 
Don't do it. You can't do it. Somebody who are here, you really need to pray. You really need to pray that the Lord will bless you by helping you to change the attitude, to change your ways. There are too many mouths around you. There's too many talk around you. And the enemy has key on you that you can change things. So he's after you. And that is why you are being discouraged. That is why you are being worried. That is why a lot of things is happening around you. But the Lord is saying today, and as I'm speaking, I just saw something come out of somebody. Thank you, Lord. It came out of somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Begin to connect. Please close your eyes and focus on yourself and get rid of all the things that have limited you. Get rid of all the charm. Charm. The things that they've given to you for protection, get rid of it. And the Lord himself will protect you. And then the doubt, let it go. Weakness, let it go. Because God is about to do it again. God to do. He says righteousness. Tell my people that righteousness will pay off. Sin will kill and destroy. Righteousness will pay. Righteousness will pay off. Righteousness will pay off. It will pay off. It will pay off. And I hear, is there anything? Is there anything to hide for me? Say, is there anything? Is there anything to hide for me? Praise the living God, church. Hallelujah. Praise the living God again. Hallelujah. <laughs> My, my name is George Midiwo, and uh, this is my beautiful wife, man. I just went to the crowd. Hi. And uh, just uh, appreciate Apostle again for doing, for hacking unto the Lord's voice. Just appreciate Apostle. I have about 10 minutes, but that is enough for the Holy Ghost to change your life. Amen. <laughs> My ministry is called Rugged Trail of the Cross, and uh, we are more of revival and a prophetic ministry. And uh, I just want to tell you, just relax in the presence of God. Right now, what I'm doing, Apostle, I'm connecting to the pulpit. Amen. Just raise your hands and pray a bit. Father, as you touch us, Jehovah Lord, as you touch your children, O oh, Spirit of the Most High God, Father, you know them. Father, there's no time to speak to each and every person, but Father, you can bless them, Jehovah Lord. You brought them here, O oh, Jehovah Father. Father, touch them, O oh, Jehovah Lord. Sir, the Lord has saved you from the spirit of limitation mm. that was thrown into your life because of jealous people. Mm. You just being here today in Europe, mm. you have beat all odds a lot, like the Lord has done a lot. I'm not talking about that. Mm. If I'm to spend if I have to spend one hour with you, wet, mm. things will come. Hallelujah. But the thing I will tell you is that know that the Lord has saved you. Amen. Mm. 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 Because, because people thought that you are going to be a blessing. People need.
knew that you were going to be a blessing. But some people did not like that. Because there's a lot of jealousy mm. around you. Mm. That is family oriented. Yes. Am I talking my like that? <laughs> but the Lord has sustained you. Also keep on confessing. Let my marriage start. Amen. Because they, they really don't want that. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Am I talking? Tell these people. Yes, sir. Is it okay? A hundred percent true. The Lord wants to use you to heal souls. When you talk to them, you are alive. Where you are from, you are alive. History. When people who are broken hearted, when they come to you, the Lord wants to use your tongue to bless them. Well, Lord. You have a lot to talk to people, to say to people who need encouragement. You have a lot. It's a gift inside of you. I see you love the Lord. I see you have... <laughs> That's a powerful thing. These are people who came to God with a reason. Mm, yeah. There are some people who know they were forgiven much. Yeah. Am I sorry? Yes. Some people when they come to God, they know they are they know they were forgiven. Yeah. Mm. That's why the Lord wants to use you. Everything that you are going through. Because before the enemy wanted to throw you to, to give you depression. Yeah. That's it. That's it. He wanted to put you in a mental home. That's it. <laughs> Your father, he said no Amen. because your life is not so much to him. Where you are seeing yourself, also, I see the gift of doing counseling for marriages. These things I'm saying, you will not do them because of you, but because of the power of God inside of you. Amen. The way right now I'm able to prophesy and give words of knowledge, it's through God. Yes. That is the way it will work with you. Amen. Me, I have nothing to offer. Glory to God. Amen. Yeah. And the Lord is saying, that which you do here, that which you do here, that which you do here, He has registered. Amen. Let me surprise you. Out of your, out of your, out of your baby, out of your baby, out of your baby, I see also uh, politicians, people with the political capability. Yeah, politics. Huh? They like it. So. He likes politics. <laughs> 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 Because you see, <laughs> what I love about the Lord is that it is a gift. Yeah. That, that is why the Lord will allow you to reproduce. Mm. It is a gift. Mm. Because the Lord has wired your mind to see details that people cannot see. Yeah. You are talking to them, they are not seeing. And also, I like the way you combine faith with logic. logic. <laughs> you combine both. Huh? At times, at times, purely here is not spiritual. Here now, let us. That is it. <laughs> let us now talk logic. Yeah. No spiritual. <laughs> oh, God has come to you. <laughs> but that's what the Lord wants to use in you. That's what the Lord wants to use in you. 
That's what the Lord wants to use in you. And the Lord is seeing everything. It's true. It's true. You are seed. Expect people very charismatic and very intellectual. Yeah. Thank you. God bless you all.